Hey guys, I hope you're doing alright, and welcome back to the Racing Line podcast. For our second episode, yes, it was a pretty bad time to start a podcast, am I right, Siraj? Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, I mean, even Siraj has sort of had enough, he's just, re- like, going with Kimi Raikkonen answers on that one. But anyways, today we're going to be talking about Haas, and whether they'll be good in 2022, of course... The new regulations are coming in, and obviously we just have to hope that it's not going to be a disaster. Yes, I'm starting very early on with the Haas puns. So, Siraj, how have Haas been so far in their sort of five or six years in F1? So, I mean, when they joined in 2016, they seemed like a relatively strong team, and that continued through to 2017 and even 2018, where I guess you could say 2018 was kind of the height of the Haas career and yeah you know they had very good finishes they had one star performance by Roman Grosjean at the Austrian Grand Prix where um, he finished fourth but I think it's fair to say that since then it's just gone all downhill for uh, Haas and you know since then 2019 2020 and 2021 have all been dismal years for them where they've gone from scoring such consistent points to just about trying to finish P10 in some Grand Prix. So, yeah, it's really gone downhill for Haas. And I think 2022 is a season that they need to do much better in or financially they could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I mean, of course, they did lose a lot of money in 2019 with the whole rich energy disaster. Um, I could just like, I could just hear Siraj was sort of laughing because of how funny I am. Right, Siraj. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so funny. I'm not stealing jokes from Will Buxton. But as I was saying, obviously the rich energy scandal did mean that Haas lost a lot of money. And I feel like that was like a really big slump for them because they went from 4th to, what no, 5th to ninth in the Constructors' Championship, which was um, pretty dismal. And yeah, now they've just stayed in ninth and 10th. Uh, throughout, uh, whilst the likes of Williams, um, who they've battled with quite a lot in the past few years, have actually like progressed. So now it's just like it's just really themselves that they're fighting this year. Um, yeah, I mean, as for this year, um, it really has not gone that well, has it, Siraj? And no, you know, with a, a completely new driver lineup, getting rid of both Roman Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen, it was already predicted from the start of the season that this wouldn't be the best idea from Gunter Steiner, you know, bringing in two new drivers, both from F2, wouldn't be the best idea. And I guess it kind of showed there were zero points scored by Haas in this season, despite many, you know, um, event eventful races, like such as Italy, where they still didn't manage to score any points. And it kind of sums up the kind of time Haas are in right now and how poor they are performing. Yeah, I mean, it, I guess it's fine that you're not really able to score points like consistently, especially with the car you have. But even in places like Hungary, where like Latifi was in a podium place at one point, I mean, like it really like begs the question, like how have they ended up like this? Um, Obviously, at the start of the season, Gunter Steiner did specify that Haas were not going to add any upgrades to their car and were going to focus, like, all of their resources on the 2022 regulations. Um, Yeah, so that's where we arrive at now. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to look at four different categories um, and judge Haas on whether they will, like, ace or completely make them a catastrophe 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 but whatever uh, or whether they'll just make it a disaster um going into 2022 uh so the first being the driver lineup so obviously they have retained their 2021 driver lineup for 2022 so haven't they yes they have and you know i think it was a good idea like of course people can say that oh they've both been so poor but i think the team have been poor because they have been the slowest car on the grid so and you can't really expect anything much from two people that are in the slowest car you can't expect them to just 
somehow managed to get consistent points. So I think it was a good idea because if you look at this season, even though it was quite bad, you can there's definitely some positives to take. Like you could say that Schumacher had consistently been very quick. You had highlights such as in Hungary where he was actually fighting Max Verstappen and had quite a good fight with him. And then also his Q2 appearance in Turkey was another highlight of his career and shows how he's just steadily improving. And if the car is there, I think he can definitely be a very good driver for the team. Um, I mean, I don't really know what your idea of highlights or like really good stuff for Haas, because I mean, uh, Schumacher was bestling Verstappen at Hungary, but Verstappen had lost literally half of, like, literally all of the barge boards on like one side of his car. Um, I mean, I guess, like, it was good to watch, but then, like, obviously, it, it's just really frustrating because Schumacher really deserves a car that's much better than that. Um, I guess a highlight you could say is how both house cars finished ahead of Lewis Hamilton, um, in Baku, or as Will Buxton would say, Hasse by Jean. Um, I can't remember if that was 2018 or 19, but... Yeah, uh, but anyway, that was because uh, Hamilton just sort of messed up the safe, the red flag restart. Um, so yeah, overall, it has just been a season to forget for Haas. Um, but into 2022, their driver lineup um, with Mick Schumacher, he's definitely improving. Um, obviously, he's known for taking time to adjust to a racing series, and then um, he has shown like really good promise, and um, in some cases, championships. And I feel like uh, F1 is pretty similar because like it's clear that he's he's, re he's definitely um adjusting to the car much better than nikita uh but i feel like we're yet to see the best of him um as for mazepin now obviously the main reason he's in that car is because of the money his father brings um i feel like if money wasn't involved then like the seat would have gone to someone like calum Eilert or i mean the list just goes on to be honest um, and yeah, he ended off the season in like a pretty meh place for the Haas car, at least. I mean, obviously there weren't any points scored, but um, yeah, and it was just sort of a quiet end to, end to the season. Of course, he has been under a lot of pressure from like uh, Twitter and the public over what happened uh, prior to the 21, 21 season starting. Um and yeah, I feel like it it has been like quite a tough year for him. Um, but yeah, I mean, Siraj, on to the next category, and it is uh, the amount of resources that Haas currently have. So how are they sort of standing at this point? I think they they stand quite okay, especially considering the fact, as you said, that they're getting a lot of money from Nikita Mazepin's uh, dad, who I believe he has an oil company, but I'm not too sure. Uh, they're getting a lot of money from that and they also announced really early in the 2021 season that they were going to work on the 2022 car very early on so it showed how even if they didn't have as many resources by putting that much time and focus into it they might just be able to bring a car that could I mean who knows they might be able to compete for or fifth in the constructors championship just like they were in 2018 so yeah you can't really know like with resources they are very important but there are definitely other things that contribute to it and I think time is an important one and considering the fact they have so much time they could actually bring out a good car for the 2022 season and I mean yeah of course during 2021 the accidents were there I mean uh, Mick ended up costing us quite a lot of money uh, I mean in Mazepin's case it was mainly like a spin so like he didn't really do any substantial damage to the car, uh, but like um, they would have lost quite a bit of money there. Of course, finishing tenth in the constructors probably didn't really give them that much of a boost either. Um, but yeah, I mean like obviously with the money that Dimitri Mazepin is bringing with his um, oil company, um, yeah, we'll see how they fare in terms of that. Um, third category, I've forgotten what it is, Siraj. Mm. 
Okay. Uh, well, this um, hasn't got this. This is a catastrophe um, in the making. Uh, but yeah. Um, do you remember it? No, I don't. What was it? Uh, let me look in the notes. Ah, yes. Uh, the third category we were going to talk about was um, how how we would estimate they would compare to everyone else. So, um, Sirosh has written here in the notes that people like Alpine and Ferrari, they've definitely uh, been improving quite a bit. Um, and I feel like... <clears throat> Yeah, and I feel like they will be probably uh, quite high up the order, um, along with the likes of McLaren. Um, so, like, I don't think Haas will be fighting the likes of those. I feel like um, a good target for them will be fighting someone like Alfa Romeo or maybe Aston Martin if they, like, uh, have... Um, well, if they, if they have another 2021 season, to be honest. Um, but yeah, Siraj, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, and now last season, Haas were going into the situation where they were bringing in two new drivers. And now Alfa Romeo are going into the season bringing in two new drivers. And it could it could definitely have quite a large impact. Um, obviously, one coming from F2 and then one from F1, Valtteri Bottas. And, you know, two new drivers adapting to a new car will definitely make quite a difference. Also, you could even say if Haas definitely boosts their car upwards, they could even start to fight Williams and even the bottom of the midfield. As you said, Aston Martin, if they don't have another great uh, winter break, they might just come out as like maybe the eighth or the ninth best car. And if they are in that situation, then we could definitely see Aston Martin fighting the Haas. Yeah, I mean... That definitely pains uh, me when you say that sentence. But, I mean, if you look at Aston Martin's uh, 2021 season, to just to go off on a tangent here, it has been pretty abysmal. I mean, they d- they had they had a, a full-time world champion on their side, and they still, like, failed to even beat out the likes of Alfa Tauri and Alpine. Um, and considering they were, like, pretty much third last season, I don't know how that happened. Um... But yeah, and I guess like the final sort of category there is to talk about is just sort of how their 2022 development is going. Um, now, Siraj has put in the notes here that Steiner has seemed very happy with recent improvements and a recession in the wind tunnel or in any like CFDs. Um, nuts. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess uh, with the sort of, with, with the amount of resources that they have, um, I feel like I feel like uh, the Haas are known for maximising as much as they can uh, from what they have, which um, we saw in times like 2018, uh, they did quite well. Um, as for like components such as the engine, obviously Ferrari are definitely making um, strides to improve. Obviously they got they beat up McLaren uh, last season, so I feel like those components will be quite strong head- heading into 2022. Um, so Sarah, your take on that? Yeah, I also agree, you know, you can think of the time that they have, the resources, and yeah, as you were mentioning, the time that they've had in the wind tunnel will definitely make an impact, telling them, like, what's good, I guess, what's not so good, what they can improve. And I think it will just be very crucial for their whole season that they use this time productively, use all the resources productively, and, you know, if they do, I think it's very, very possible that we can see Haas jumping back up to maybe not the top of the midfield just yet, but maybe the bottom of the midfield trying to edge their way towards where Alpha Tari were this season or even Alpine trying to maybe if there's a situation that arises, they can try and fight for the podium. Yeah, I mean, of course, the new regulations mean that cars will definitely be able to follow each other. Um, a lot better hopefully so like perhaps there will be a situ- there, there'll be more like sort of hungry type situations where um like a, f- a few of the bigger cars are knocked out so and one of the hasses ends up being in like a really good position um but yeah i mean 
apart from that, I mean, I guess there isn't really much to say because, I mean, obviously, we can't really speculate anymore until Haas release like, a new statement or, um, like, uh, their sort of progress um, during barring preseason testing. Um, but yeah, I mean, Haas have also been known for, like, struggling a lot to, like, uh, maintain their future in F1. Um, because, I mean, of course... Whilst Gene Haas may have a lot of money, he's also prone to like having uh, lawyers on him for not paying taxes and things like that. So it's quite clear that Haas are like treading on very dangerous waters. Uh, and I feel like if they don't like get um, at least to like somewhere like the Alfa Romeos, then I feel like it's definitely going to be over for Haas. Um, but I mean. In a case where it was, uh, Sir Rod, what do you think would happen to the team then? I mean, I think it would be quite... I mean, as you said, you can't really predict what will happen, but you know, if they do get to a point, they definitely have to be fighting with Alfa Romeo this season, uh, maybe even going up to fighting Williams. And I think that, it, as you said, if they don't even get to that position, if they really stay where they are, then next, uh, you know, in 2023, we might not even see them being an F1 team anymore. And Sorry, uh, someone was just at the door, never mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, like you said, it's very difficult to gauge um, how... Has will do, and I feel like if they're in a situation where they're just not performing where they want to be for another season, I feel like Gene Haas will have just sort of had enough of it, um, and it will probably be down to someone like Dimitri Mazepin or quote unquote Rich Energy to, uh, I guess, just sort of like salvage um, the team, who's who will no doubt just be dying at that point. Um, as for like the drivers, I feel like Mazepin, it's kind of over for him, um, unless like his dad can just sort of sort something out. Um, as for Mick, he's obviously got like Ferrari really like want him to get him on boards um, in place of Carlos Sainz. Um, so yeah, I feel like in the case that um, Haas becomes another uh, sinking ship, um, options like aren't like over yet. So I mean, we could we could see we could see Haas like rebranded and. Uh, doing quite well in the future, um, so let's just hope for that. Um, but yeah, I mean that's kind of it for what we want to discuss today. So, do you have anything else to add? Not really. I think you've I think we've said it all. Uh, so yeah, I feel like that is kind of it for today's podcast, guys. If you did enjoy, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe. To our channel, go check it out on Spotify. Um, it's going to be available there earlier than on YouTube. Um, but anyways, thank you guys so much for listening or watching. We'll see you all next time. Goodbye.